Hey guys, how are you doing? Uh, I'm Arjun Sondi, and hopefully you, I've gotten you a little interested in what economics is all about. Today we're going to talk about chapter two, which is the theory of consumer behavior, which is you and I. So for example, if you are given a pocket money of 500 rupees a week, and you're deciding whether you want to buy more clothes or whether you want to buy more toys, uh, what, how do you decide which of the combinations you're going to pick, and how that changes when certain variables changes is what chapter two is going to be all about. So the first thing we're going to start with is some basic assumptions uh, about when we're trying to model consumer behavior. So we're going to start with the simplest example, which is pick two goods. So clothes and toys, again, you can pick two goods which are very narrow, very broadly, that's up to you. Just to keep the notation simple, we usually say there are two goods are x1 and x2. So x1 represents the quantity of the first good that you would like to buy, whether it's clothes or anything else. And x2 represents the quantity of good 2 that you want to buy. Now obviously one variable that's very important when you're deciding whether how much of good 1 or good 2 to buy are prices of good 1 and prices of good 2. So both of those, the, the subscript 1 and 2 correspond to good 1 and good 2. Which one do you think is another very important variable that will determine whether you buy more of x or 1 or how much of the combinations of the two goods you will buy? That's right, income is a very important factor that will determine, like in your case, it was your pocket money of 500 rupees, it's very important how much, how, what combination of the two goods you will buy. So this is written as M. So M uh, in this model is income, P1, P2, X1, X2, those are the five variables that we are going to be dealing with when we study uh, the theory of consumer behavior. A bundle, so a, a few terminologies, a bundle corresponds to the combination of x1 and x2 that we would like to consume. So, and we write that as x1 comma x2. So for example, if I say the combination for a bundle that you are consuming is 5 comma 10, what does that mean? That's right, that means that you're going to be consuming 5 units of good 1 and 10 units of good 2. So just to give an example of what these uh, terminologies mean. All right, so the next thing we're going to start with is 2.1, which is what the budget, and that's what we will start focusing on today, is how do we determine, uh, and how does the budget of our, based on our income, determine the combination of goods that we are going to be buying. All right, so let me, and we'll do an example, uh, a numerical example, which might help you uh, understand the concepts better as well. So one thing we're going to start with is these variables are going to kept, be kept fixed. So we're going to have price of good one, price of good two, and income. Now these are three very important variables that are going to be kept fixed uh, when you are making those decisions. And then based on these, we will decide, based on what happens to these variables, we will decide what combination of x1 and x2 we would like to consume. So a very important equation in this model is what's called the budget constraint. The budget constraint, in its word, you can see that budget refers to our income. And the reason constraint is here is because we are constrained by how much income we are bringing in. So again, going back to your example, if you have your income of 500 rupees a week, then that's what you have to spend. You can choose to buy good one, good two. You can even buy, choose to save some and, and use it for consumption in the future. So the equation is that you have income that you have to spend. Obviously, you cannot spend more than what you're bringing in. So the amount that you have to spend has to be less than or equal to, which means it can be at most that number for your income. The amount that you can spend is going to be based on how much of good one that you can buy, which is the price of good one times the quantity that you want to consume of good one. And we'll do a numerical example uh, so that you can understand that better as well. You can also choose to buy good two, so price of good two times how much quantity of good two you want to buy. So this equation, which is a very important equation, determines based on our income, what combination of the two goods that we can afford to buy between x1 and x2. So let's just do a simple example to look at how a budget constraint works. So let's say you have an income, uh, let me pick some variables here. Let's say price of good one is five, price of good two is 10 and you have a total income of 20. All right, again, I'm gonna keep the goods and variables are generic, uh, just because it's easy to work with, with that. So let's look at all possible bundles 
of x1 and x2 that you can consume based on those variables. So obviously you can choose to consume none of either, uh, which is an option, which means you save all your 20 uh, rupees that you have. You can choose to have one of good one, uh, which will cost five rupees, which means you have 15 left, and you can still choose to not have any of good two. You can choose to have two of good one, you can choose to have three of good one, and all of these options means you can consume more of good one and still not consuming any good two. Now if we look at some combinations of good one and good two, we can choose to have zero of good one and one of good two, zero of good one, two of good two, and those now, that means if you are spending, let's look at this example, you're spending zero on good one, which costs you nothing, two on good two costs you 10 rupees per unit, which makes it a total of 20. So here are the possibilities uh, of all the different bundles, that's what the bundle refers to, of good one and good two that you can consume uh, given your income of 20. Now I'm gonna leave this video with a question for you. Can you, is it possible for you, for you to consume this bundle? Given those parameters, tell me next time, and that's where I'm gonna start, if you are going to be able to consume two of good one and two of good two, and if yes or not, why not? All right, uh, so that's what we're gonna to conclude today. We just introduced you to what a budget for a consumer means and what the constraints are depending on what we want to buy. And we'll start, carry on with this topic next time. Thank you.